We would like to show you how to prepare a dangerous good shipment using a UN specification 4GV Fabber box. Let's imagine we have to ship two plastic bottles containing each two liters of acrylic acid stabilized UN 2218. ADR IMDG and IATA, the regulations applicable for transport of dangerous goods respectively via road, sea and air, do not allow for this product with a quantity previously indicated, the use of limited quantity packing instruction. So we have to use the packing instruction P001 for ADR, P001 for IMDG and the 855 Cargo aircraft only for IATA, with a maximum of 30 liters per package. These three packing instructions permit the use of plastic inner packagings and a UN specification fiberboard box as outer packaging. But with a normal UN specification 4G fiberboard box, you can insert only inner packaging as approved on the test certification or inner packaging of equivalent or smaller size but with similar design with same or major resistance to impact and stacking forces with same or smaller openings and with additional cashing material to take up void spaces and prevent movement of inner packagings. So if you don't have a specific fiber box tested with your inner packagings or you are not sure that these can be considered equivalent, a good solution could be the use of a UN 4GV fiber box. This kind of package can be used for any kind of objects or inner packagings containing liquid or solid of packing group 1, 2 or 3, provided these are accepted by the specific packing instruction of the applicable mode of transport. The UN 4GV must have successfully passed specific tests as reported on the certification test released by the National Competent Authority. By choosing a 4GV, you must first verify that the total gross weight of inner packagings does not exceed the value indicated on the instructions displayed internally. In addition, the total gross weight of the entire package must not exceed a specific value marked in the UN specification code. So now let's see how to pack. Closures must be securely held in place so to prevent any accidental release. Within inner packagings, a sufficient ullage must be left to ensure liquid expansion caused by temperatures. For air transport, inner packagings containing liquid are normally requested to withstand internal pressure which produce a pressure differential of not less than 95 kPa. Although this is not required by regulations or certification tests, it's recommended to place each inner packaging within a plastic bag. Doing in this way, the inner packaging will not get in contact with absorbent material and accidental contamination of the product will not occur during opening. Once the inner packaging are ready, you proceed by assembling the outer package starting from the bottom by following the numbers marked from 1 to 5. A leak-proof plastic bag must be inserted in order to prevent leakage outside the outer package. The 4GV specification for liquid requires absorbent material sufficient for the entire content of the package. You will pour a first layer of absorbent material up to 20 mm high as prescribed on the certification test. You will insert then the two inner packagings. The test certification requires to keep a minimum distance from each other and from the other sides of the box of at least 20 millimeters. 
you will proceed adding additional absorbent material so to fulfill all empty spaces till the top side of the box. The plastic bag must be adequately closed with adhesive tape or any other equivalent system. You can now close the box following the numbers marked from 6 to 10. The package must now be weighed. In order to verify that the maximum gross weight of 14 kilos is not exceeded. The next step is marking and labeling. For road transport it's sufficient to display the hazard label and the UN number of the product. For maritime transport you need also to mark the proper shipping name in English. For air transport you also need to mark the name and addresses of shipper and consignee. And since you have used the cargo aircraft only packing instruction you need to apply the relative label on the same side of the hazard label. The orientation arrows, mandatory for liquid in combination packagings, are already marked on. Let's see the last step, documentation. For road transport as DG declaration a specific format is not requested. However, it's mandatory to report name and addresses of shipper and consignee, UN number, proper shipping name, packing group, number and type of packages and quantity, information for partial exemption, place and date, and the signature. For maritime transport you may use the multimodal dangerous goods form, also valid for intermodal traffic but not accepted by IATA. You need to complete all boxes with information about shipper and consignee, proper shipping name, UN number, quantity, packing group, number and type of packages, emergency contact and information about the signatory. For air transport it's mandatory to use the shipper's declaration for dangerous goods. Also here you need to complete all boxes with information about shipper and consignee, the number of pages, delete the non-applicable aircraft type based on the packing instruction and delete the word radioactive. Complete then with UN number, proper shipping name, classes, packing group, type of packages and quantity, packing instruction, emergency contacts and information about the signatory. That's it. For further information we invite you to visit the SERPAG website.